Bobby, what's on your radar today? Well, for the Proud Boys, the hammer has fallen. Joe Biggs, a leader of the far-right male organization, received a 17-year sentence last week for his activities during the January 6th Capitol riots. Zachary Rail got 15 years, and Enrique Tario, the group's chairman, will be sentenced today. He was similarly convicted of seditious conspiracy to obstruct the 2020 election certification and other serious crimes earlier this year. Now, while 17 and 15 years constitute lengthy prison sentences, that's actually considerably shorter than what the government requested. Prosecutors wanted 33 years for Biggs and 30 for Rail. That's in keeping with the government's view that they committed acts of terrorism. The prosecution asked U.S. District Judge Timothy Kelly to apply a terrorism enhancement to the sentence. Quote, Biggs committed a crime of terrorism on January 6th, and the court should hold, should not hesitate to impose a sentence that reflects the seriousness of the crime and its threat to our nation, as reflected in the sentencing guidelines, wrote the prosecutors in their sentencing recommendation document. Now, in court, prosecutors argued that their actions, the actions of those defendants, certainly constituted terrorism because, though January 6th did not involve widespread destruction, exploding buildings, mass casualties, its impact on the nation's collective scarring is like that of a terrorist attack. Assistant U.S. Attorney Jason McCullough argued that the psychological fallout from January 6th is, quote, no different than the act of a spectacular bombing of a building, end quote. Now, the judge quibbled slightly with this argument, accusing prosecutors of overstating their case. But ultimately, he agreed in principle that, quote, while blowing up a building in some city somewhere is very bad act, the constitutional moment we were in that day is something that is so sensitive that it deserves a significant sentence. Uh, this doesn't seem overly scientific to me. Prosecutors said Biggs committed an act of terrorism akin to blowing up a building, and he should get 33 years in prison. The judge said... Well, that's sort of an exaggeration, so how about half that? <laughs> Biggs and other January 6th participants undoubtedly committed crimes, to be clear. Vandalism, trespassing, in some cases violence against police officers, and for my say, they should absolutely be held accountable for the mayhem that they caused. But prosecutors who implicitly accused them of staging something along the lines of another 9-11 have gotten way over their skis. Many Americans have understandable, deep embarrassment over the spectacle of January 6th, and rightly so. But they do not consider the riot to be anywhere near as serious as a blown up building. The government came down extra hard on Biggs because he's a leader of the Proud Boys and also because he has military training. He should have known in their view that he was in a unique position to actually provoke violence and destruction as he led the crowd to the barricades and tore down parts of the fencing. Now again, inarguably committed crimes and should, in fact, face the consequences for them. But rounding up his actions to terrorism is frankly giving the Proud Boys' plans more credit than they deserve. Broken windows and defiled deaths were never going to prevent Joe Biden from taking office. If there was a conspiracy to steal the election, it unfolded in the weeks leading up to January 6th as President Donald Trump and his acolytes allegedly attempted to interfere with electoral processes underway in the states. What occurred on January 6th was a largely spontaneous burst of property destruction and limited violence that interrupted Congress's certification of the votes. A riot, for sure, not a planned insurrection. As my colleague at Reason, Jacob Sullum, wrote when Biggs and Tario were first convicted, quote, the term insurrection implies a level of planning and organization that does not fit the chaotic reality of what happened that day. 17 years, 15 years, extremely long times in prison, only the worst of the worst, frankly. The most dangerous and irredeemable sort of people deserve to languish in prison for that length of time. It does the country no good to pretend that what transpired on January 6th was a terrorist attack highly and effectively organized by a paramilitary group that came within striking distance of actually preventing the peaceful transfer of power. That is magical thinking of a kind that has transfixed the mainstream media, the Democratic Party, and national law enforcement, who all believe that far-right fraternal organizations coordinated to engage in a planned attack on the nation's capital with the goal of keeping Trump in power. But no matter how desperately they believe that's what happened, it isn't. Take it from me, I was actually there. I was covering the gathering on the Capitol steps for Reason Magazine at the time. What I saw was largely First Amendment protected protesting that then got totally out of hand 
absolutely Trump's fault for inflaming the crowd with his speech, and then culminating in an actual riot where some in the crowd smashed windows, fought with cops, and rampaged throughout the halls of Congress. It was extremely bad, and everyone who broke the law should face the appropriate consequences, and Trump should face the consequences. But we're re rewriting our own history when we pretend that the Capitol was under siege by an armed group with an actual plan to take over the government. Yeah, I completely agree that the most significant criminal behavior that there's evidence for was uh, committed by Donald Trump and his associates, uh, his, his uh, people who were indicted along with him in this uh, most recent Georgia indictment, the alleged conspiracy to uh, submit fake slates of electors in seven states across the country um, that was intended to culminate in enough confusion that Mike Pence could ostensibly take advantage of and say, well, we're going to ignore all of these votes and get the House to decide who is going to be president of the United States instead of the people of the Republic is a much more significant crime than what anybody committed on 1-6. Moreover, the people on 1-6 were very much misled uh, by Donald Trump and his cohort as to the legitimacy of claims yes. of election fraud across the state. And that's being validated in the courts right now as we see that he's going to have to pay this defamation judgment to the two women um, uh, poll workers in Georgia, who they really launched a campaign against that enabled, uh, got them uh, harassed. They had to leave their homes, et cetera, accusing them of stuffing ballot boxes and the like, which never, in fact, right. happened. So this does seem to be a misdirection. And as someone who has been consistently against uh, mass criminalization of people, ratcheting up of criminal penalties, the, uh, incar the carceral state, the fact that we have a larger percent of our country incarcerated uh, than anybody else in the world, including nations that we describe as authoritarian like China, these kind of excessively long sentences are certainly not something that I would support either. Um, I also feel this way, of course, about people who were Black Lives Matter protesters that got disproportionately long sentences, people who were victims of three strike rules, people who languished in prison for years because of the crack cocaine sentencing disparity, people who languish in prison right now uh, who have not been convicted of crimes because of cash bail standards, which enable rich people to pay bail and get out while they're awaiting trial, while poor people, regardless of their innocence or guilt, have to languish in prisons, sometimes dying in prison prior to ever being convicted of a crime. Uh, and I just hope that if anything mm -hmm. can come of this, it's that the way that these 1-6 protesters are uh, being treated uh, encourages many people on the right to join in with some of the um, movements uh, against mass incarceration that has been spearheaded and led uh, by the left for so long. And against, you know, knee-jerk describing everything as terrorism, um, mm -hmm. because the, the extra and substantial penalties and prison sentences when something gets described as terrorism by prosecutors is, uh, it's massive. And you see what happened here, which is just, they said, yeah, this is terrorism, so that's why we're asking for, you know, 30 years. And the judge is like, it's kind of terrorism 15. Like, that's just... Well, that's, 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 that's how sentencing yeah. goes. No, no, it's, I know. It's and, very and, subjective. And that's going to be applied to all sorts of... Well, and, and I know that, you know, there are many criminally ju criminal justice-minded um, people on, on the left and in progressive circles who have uh, for a long time fought these kinds of things. Um, but then, I, you know, I did see um, when I testified uh, before Congress some years back about, um, about uh, hate crimes and hate crime statistics, uh, that, you know, there were questions from... AOC and the other squad members about why uh, you know, more things are not being properly classified as terrorism. And, uh, you know, you, you, this is where it's going to lead is, is Black Lives Matter protests, anti-police protesters, cop city protesters, right? They're all being, protesters. they're all being, the cop city people are all being RICO'd actually yes. under Georgia's RICO statute, which is related to what, you know, which you can think rightly or wrongly, uh, happening to Trump and his associates. So it's, uh, yeah, across the state, across the country, rather, they have been aggressively ratcheting up uh, penalties for uh, environmental protests, chaining themselves to pipelines and trees, uh, causing damage to infrastructure. Those kinds of crimes, which are, you don't have to agree with them, but are not right. harmful to human beings right. in the least. Uh, are getting people jail uh, sentences yeah. that are commensurate with folks who have committed murder or raped children right. and things like that. Uh, Jessica Resniak, I think, got a nine-year sentence for participating in a, in a, a stop oil pipeline uh, protest. It's also worth noting there was this interesting case of Crystal Mason back in 2016, who unwittingly, she was um, 
she had been convicted of a felony tax crime and didn't realize that she wasn't allowed to vote in her state. Of course, it changes state by state. And so she cast a vote in 2016 and was sentenced to six years in jail, unknowingly, you know, because she unknowingly voted in an election. And so I do think that we have to yeah. have a wide view of aggressively harsh sentencing practices and also look at the role that certain conservatives are playing as they argue that the reason that there is, there is crime in certain urban areas is because of lax sentencing. There has been a real push, a tough on crime push from conservatives to say, if you live in a place like San Francisco or Chicago, these, the, the cities that keep being brought up over and over again, despite the murder rates being much higher in many Southern cities, that if you live there, it's because progressive prosecutors haven't been having long enough sentences for people who have committed crimes. That, that argument is obviously in tension with the understanding here that there has been a increase in sentencing um, that is disproportionate and, I would argue, wrong. So people are going to have to wrestle with those two realities. Sure. Although, I mean, in fairness to the tough on crime people, I think their their argument, and it's different in every district, is that um, people aren't being prosecuted at all. And I think, and I think the, the people For who participated— For things like drug crimes that many of us believe well, should be illegal in the first yeah, place. I think shoplifting is more what we're—if we're talking about sure. progressive prosecutors not bringing charges um, or, or weapons, I mean, weapons charges. Um, I think the January 16th people, they should be charged. They should serve time. I mean, they have served time. Most of them have been in prison this whole yeah, time. Yeah, because the nature of it is trial, that you have to yeah. stay in prison um, Yeah, when you're but, not convicted uh, yet. But yeah, 30, 30 years, 17 years, 15 years, these are sentences for murderers. Yeah. All right, we'll have more rising right after this.